everybody. My name is Lori Anderson with FreedomOutpost.com and FreedomLover70.blogspot.com. I am recording tonight a conference call that is going to be held by Senator Mike Lee, Matt Salmon, Tom Graves, and Matt Keeb. The purpose of this conference call is for concerned American citizens to get together and see what the next step to defeating Obamacare is. If I am allowed to be called on, I will be addressing the issue of the United States Constitution's Origination Clause. That is in Article 1, Section 7. The reason that that is an extremely important clause is it states that all taxes must start in the House of Representatives. And the reason that that is extremely important is, as you know, Chief Justice Roberts, he declared that Obamacare, or also known as the Affordable Care Act, was unconstitutional as a law, but it was constitutional as a tax. Now, the reason that this is so important is because it did not start in the House of Representatives. The Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, was started in the Senate, thus making it completely an illegal bill, and we need to address that and see what the senators have to say about that. That Democrats would be the ones clamoring for a repeal and delay of the individual mandate and looking for any way to get out of the box that they put themselves in. It's frustrating that they wouldn't do that during the battle over the, the continuing resolution, but th this is our opportunity today. So what we're going to talk about tonight is next steps and how we continue this fight and, and how we win this fight, because ultimately fixing policy and making sure that our health care system works in America is what this was about. A lot of people were playing politics, but those of us that were focused on actually fixing the problem ultimately believe that there will be political benefits to doing the right thing in the long run. Um, if anyone would like to help Freedom Works in this fight, I would invite you to, to help um, fund our efforts as we go into 2014, as we continue to drive the message on, on health care and continue to drive the message on fiscal responsibility. If you're interested in doing that, please hit star three to donate. Now I have the uh, distinct pleasure to introduce the folks that are on this call tonight and tell us what's going on in the Senate and the House. Um, I have Senator Mike Lee. Everybody on this call knows he was the leader. He was the author of the letter and, and one of the few voices of reason in an otherwise unreasonable conversation about the, the federal budget over these past three four weeks. We also have uh, Congressman Matt Salmon and Congressman Tom Graves, and they will, they will be speaking after Senator Lee. With that, let me introduce uh, the Senator from Utah, Senator Mike Lee. Thank you, Matt. Thanks to all of you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. I want to start by talking a little bit about how this effort started. Back in July, I first considered the option of pushing to defund Obamacare and by so doing delay it. In response to the President's announcement on July 2nd that he would not be implementing or enforcing certain aspects of the law, his claim for his need to do so was effectively the law is not ready to implement. I'm not ready to implement. So I'm going to change the law. I'm going to change the statute and implement it in a way that's different. It was effectively a statutory modification by the stroke of the executive pen. The president, of course, has no constitutional authority to do that, to amend legislation without Congress. He has no statutory authority to do so uh, under the Affordable Care Act. And so he was acting outside him of his constitutional uh, authority. Uh, and so in response to that, I, I concluded, look, if the president's not going to follow the law that he calls his signature legislative accomplishment, if he himself says the law is not ready to be implemented, uh, then we shouldn't fund it. And I ended up creating quite a stir by announcing that I would not vote for any continuing resolution that included funding for the further implementation and enforcement of Obamacare. Now, it's interesting that this ended up being controversial. It shouldn't be all that controversial for a Republican, a uh, Republican who was elected in 2010 uh, with a very clear mandate uh, from uh, both
orders uh, to do everything possible to fight against Obamacare. It shouldn't be all that remarkable that a Republican senator elected under those circumstances uh, would say, I'm not going to vote to fund Obamacare's implementation and enforcement. It nonetheless became controversial, quite interestingly. One of the reasons why this was necessary is because uh, Congress has fallen into a really bad pattern for the last four years, four and a half years, Congress has been operating outside of the regular appropriations process, mm-hmm. a process by which it passes at least a dozen, uh, often more, individual uh, spending measures, uh, spending measures, uh, one of which will fund defense op- op- operations, another of which will fund, uh, say, transportation projects housing and urban development and so forth. In other words, Congress had the opportunity to consider, debate, discuss, amend uh, each of its appropriations measures, and each appropriations measure is focused on a discrete area of government or a combination of areas that have something to do with each other. But when it operates on the basis of back-to-back continuing resolution, it's basically pushing a reset button. And at the moment at which Congress is saying, we're going to fund everything in government, we're going to fund nothing in government. It's analogous to uh, someone who, uh, while shopping at a grocery store, goes to buy one item that's sold by the cashier. You may not buy that one item at the grocery store unless you buy one of every item in the entire store. A little bit like what it's like being a member of Congress and being asked to vote on a continuing resolution can't fund anything unless you fund everything. Uh, I think that's wrong, and I think it's one of the many reasons why we should not use continuing resolutions. They inevitably result in a shutdown, especially whereas here you've got a new product on the shelf, to use the store analogy and take it one step further. You've got this new product called Obamacare that is already hurting people, causing people to lose their jobs, causing people to have their wages cut and their hours slashed causing people to have their health plans disappear or become a lot more expensive. And so what I was saying was that, look, I'm willing to fund everything else in government, even programs that I don't like, but I'm not willing to vote for anything that funds Obamacare. In the end, it was the Democrats that caused the shutdown. They caused the shutdown because they were unwilling to pass responsible measures, many of them passed by the House of Representatives, it would have kept other aspects of government functioning at mm-hmm. current spending levels, uh, uh, but it did not include Obamacare spending. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem with this is that now you've got Democrats rushing uh, to a somewhat similar position that many Republicans were uh, have been in for some time, in that a number of Democrats in Congress are now saying, uh, look, uh, we see that a lot of this is unsustainable. We see that this is going to be unfair to subject the people to the individual mandate, especially when the law is not ready to be implemented, especially when the website isn't even working. People can't sign up, and it's causing a lot of problems. Uh, Well, had they come to this position just a couple of weeks ago, we could have avoided a government shutdown altogether. Mm -hmm. One of the many, one of the several measures that the House of Representatives passed before the shutdown uh, regrettably occurred was one that uh, would have funded everything else in government but prohibited uh, the enforcement of the individual mandate and that would have uh, prohibited members of Congress from receiving subsidies uh, while participating on the health care exchanges established under Obamacare. They rejected that. They voted against it. They were unwilling to do even that. They were turning all of this into a political football the American people, uh, including the many people who suffered as a result of the shutdown, as funds in a high-stakes political game. In other words, they were unwilling to allow Congress to fund anything in government unless Congress was willing to fund everything in government, including and especially all provisions of Obamacare. So where do we go from here? I, I think that there are a lot of indications now that Republicans and enough Democrats both houses of Congress will be able to pass something that suspends the individual mandate. Uh, once that becomes law, assuming, assuming that tradition turns out to be correct and assuming the president's willing to sign it, that will end up 
easing the pain for many Americans uh, who shouldn't be subjected to the individual mandate, especially when the president has refused to enforce the employer mandate. Uh, but it will bring a lot of relief to those who would otherwise be suffering under that. It is likely, however, to cause other problems, other imbalances within Obamacare's already unstable system. It's going to make the law that much more unsustainable, that much more unstable. And in that circumstance, uh, I think that the entire regime established under Obamacare is likely to fall. Now, it could fall in one of two directions. Progressives are, of course, hoping that we will fall forward with Obamacare, meaning fall forward uh, as they would see it to a system in which they would hope Congress would adopt uh, a single-payer, government-run, government-funded health care system. And we know that this is the progressive dream going back many decades, part of their utopian dream of perpetually expanding the federal government so that it micromanages more and more aspects of our economy, including many aspects of our economy that involve very personal decisions like health care. The other direction in which we could fall would be to take a step back from that kind of expansion of the federal government. Now, in this circumstance, uh, assuming I'm right that Obamacare is going to prove unsustainable, I hope and I'm going to work tirelessly to make sure that we don't fall forward in the direction of, of a single-payer, government-funded, government-run health care system, and we've got to remain focused on that. We also need to maintain our focus now, as conservatives on the fact that many Democrats, including several Democrats from red states up for re-election in 2014, are now reversing the position that they had taken recently, reversing the position their party took recently, uh, and, and telling us that they would be in favor of suspending the individual mandate. This will help us emphasize the fact that the shutdown was unnecessary, the shutdown was unwise, the shutdown was not what Republicans wanted, and had these very same Democrats uh, been willing to do just a few weeks ago what they are now willing to do, there would have been no need for, no cause for, no occasion for a government shutdown. And so even though a lot of people within the news media establishment have dutifully attributed fault associated with the shutdown uh, to the Republicans, I think that this shift uh, exposes the truth behind the matter, which is that those who were working tirelessly to avoid the need for a shutdown were Republicans. It was, after all, the Republican-controlled House under the heroic leadership of Speaker Boehner and Majority Leader Cantor, who offered several alternatives. Uh, first, to defund Obamacare in its entirety indefinitely. Then when that was rejected, they offered a compromise position below that, which was to defund Obamacare's implementation for one year. And then Harry Reid and the Senate Democrats rejected that. The president issued his veto threat. So they moved forward with the continuing resolution I described a few minutes ago, offering to keep everything else in government running, uh, but suspending the individual mandate and uh, incorporating the bitter amendment, prohibiting members of Congress from receiving subsidies on Obamacare's uh, health care exchange system. They rejected that as well. Even that was not acceptable to them. They were unwilling to compromise, and they offered up nothing to protect the American people from the harmful effects of Obamacare. Even after the shutdown started, moreover, they were unwilling to allow Republicans to keep other essential, non-controversial aspects of the federal government's operation, aspects that have nothing to do with Obamacare implementation, aspects of the government that are uncontroversial funding. They refused to allow us to pass measures funding veterans' benefits, funding the operation of the national parks, cancer research, and so forth. Mm -hmm. This is inexcusable, and the more the court gets out on this, the more the fault associated with the shutdown will be properly placed with the Democratic